let's see the standard penetration test so what we do in this test we dig a borehole first and we use a split spoon sampler and our penetrometer assembly and then we apply the impact loading using a hammer now because of this impact loading this assembly will try to penetrate the soil and the soil will show some resistance to this penetration so how do we measure that resistance that resistance is measured in in the required number of blows number of blows for a particular depth so if it is a dense sand or a stiff clay then for the same depth it will require more number of blows of the hammer or if it is a soft clay or loose sand then the same depth can be achieved even with the less number of hammers so in this test we find out the n values and that is nothing but the number of blows number of blows required to penetrate 300 mm so i'll tell you in detail in some time so why do we use this test first of all now first of all it is used for the site exploration so we want to find out what kind of soil is there in our in our field site or in our required site so for that we conduct this test apart from that we can obtain a representative sample from this test so other other parameters can also be measured such as water content and the unit weight so these kind of parameters can also be measured with the sample obtained in this test and apart from these reasons we saw earlier that in shallow foundation or in deep foundation this n value what we obtain in this test it is related with the pile load capacity or bearing capacity in case of shallow foundation so using this n value that those kind of correlations are available and we can obtain those values so that's why it is a very important test so let's see in more details so how do we conduct this test so as i said it measures the resistance of the soil strata resistance of soil and we use split spoon sampler and so first of all we dig a bore hole and then we put our split spoon sampler in that and then we apply the impact loading and so this conduct we this test we conduct for a depth of up to 450 mm so we will keep on putting the impact by hammer up to we reach the or until we reach this depth that is 450 mm and we measure the number of blows measured for for every 150 mm so for every 150 mm the required number of blows we will measure and the n value n value what we are trying to find out in this test it is the number of blows required for last 300 mm penetration so we neglect or we discard the initial 150 mm or the number of blows required for the initial 150 mm depth and this 150 mm depth or the number of blows required for this depth it is known as the seating drive and we do not use this the value of number of blows for this depth the n value is given for the last 300 mm penetration or the number of blows required for the last 300 mm penetration so as i said earlier in this case we can obtain the representative sample so we can find out other properties of the soil also 
and this test is conducted at every 750 mm interval 750 mm vertical interval to find out the proper what is the soil profile in the field so let's say first we have conducted at this depth or test now the second test would be conducted at a depth difference of 750 mm from this above level so after that after what we obtain the n value from this test we apply some corrections so basically we apply two corrections that is overburden correction and dilatancy correction so first we apply overburden and then we apply the dilatancy correction so let's see these so first is overburden correction now as i said the required number of blows will be more if the soil is in dense condition or it will be less if it is in loose condition it means if we are talking about the if we are talking about the cohesion less soil such as gravel so first of all this correction is applied for a gravelly soil or the for gravels we can say it is applied for these soils so now here we can relate the n value with the relative density if the relative density of the soil is more then required number of blows will be more and if the relative density is less that means if it is a loose sand then required number of blows will be less now what happens if if the soil is having same relative density density but different confining pressure then this n value becomes misleading because if the confining pressure is different so more is the confining pressure so more will be the value of n and for a less value of confining pressure lower confining pressure this n value will also be small so this confining pressure is related with the overburden so if we are conducting this test at a smaller depth so if we are conducting at a smaller depth so the overburden will be less and if overburden is less then we will get n value a less n value we'll get a less n value and that will be underestimated or we can say we will underestimate the relative density of the soil whereas if we are going at large depth then this n value what it should be actually it will be more than that and the relative density will be overestimated so because of these reasons we apply the overburden correction and the corrected n value is given as n dash which is up, up after applying the overburden correction n dash is equal to cn times n and cn here is the correction factor correction factor for overburden pressure and the value of cn can be obtained using this formula cn is equal to 0.77 log 2000 upon p here p is the over effective overburden pressure effective overburden pressure and and its unit is kilo newton per meter square so using this formula we can find out the value of cn and then we can obtain the corrected value or the correction in n value for the overburden pressure now the another correction that is there is the dilatancy correction so 
so it is applied in case of cells or we can say saturated cells saturated cells or fine sand that is also saturated fine sand so what we are implying with the saturated that the water table is above our test site so because of that this saturated condition is prevailing so if the n dash value that is the value obtained after this overburden correction if this value is greater than 15 then the correction is given as or the corrected n, n value is given as n double dash which is equal to 15 plus 0.5 into n dash minus 15 where n dash here is the n value after after overburden correction so why do we apply this correction that is the question so this question is applied when this or this correction is applied when this n dash is greater than 15 now n dash greater than 15 implies that it is a it is a dense sand dense sand now in dense sand when you apply this impact kind of loading when you put this or when you drop this hammer then this dense sand has a tendency to dilate which is similar to oh we can say the over consolidated clay also when we applied a very high pressure on these kind of soils then they have a tendency to dilate or expand and when the soil expands i talked in shear strength also when they have a tendency to dilate or expand then negative pore water pressure develops and we know that if negative pore water pressure develops then effective stress increases it means that the resistance offered by the soil will resistance of soil will increase which is not correct because it is because of this negative pore water pressure and this pore water pressure condition will not prevail forever it will drain out so it is a temporary condition that's why this increase in the resistance is is not very correct or it is a pseudo increase that we have to account for so that is accounted for using this correction factor so from this equation we obtain the dilatancy correction so the n value after dilatancy correction so that is about the standard penetration test after that two more tests are that there that is static cone penetration test and dynamic cone penetration test so as such they are not very important so just let me tell you some points so in this test static cone penetration test or it is also co called as cone penetration test in this test we do not obtain any sample as we did in the standard penetration test similarly in dynamic cone penetration test also we do not obtain any sample apart from that this test is conducted for soft clays and silt and fine sand so what is the benefit of this test so as the name suggests it is static cone penetration test so first of all both these tests are are carried out with this conical sampler so for this both the tests it this kind of sample sampler is used and we do not need to dig a borehole as we did in case of standard penetration test we can conduct it on the surface already so apart from that so what we do in this test we uh, what i was saying that this is this is a static cone penetration test so this this relates to the actual loading condition on the soil we do not apply dynamic loading on the soil we always apply the static loading if we are talking about the pile foundation or anything else in most of the cases the loading is static so that's why the result from this test are correlated with correlated with pile load capacity so 
so what we do in this test we conduct it at a constant rate of penetration which is equal to 20 mm per second so the rate of rate of penetration is constant here and we obtain the cone penetration resistance CPR for a 100 mm penetration so the resistance offered for a 100 mm depth will be our cone penetration resistance and in case of dynamic cone penetration test it is same, somewhat similar to st st the standard penetration test but here we are not using a bore hole and we are using this conical sampler and so in this case also hammer is used which is having a weight of 65 kgs and a height of fall of 750 mm and this this height and weight it is same in case of standard penetration test also and we measure this number of blows required for each 100 mm and the dynamic cone penetration resistance is reported for a or the number of blows required for 300 mm penetration number of blows required for 300 mm depth and in this case also sample is not obtained so these are some of the points some of the important points in these two tests so that is it for the penetrometer test so in common these tests are group tests penetrometer tests